welcome. Now, last week, Ghana signed a voluntary partnership agreement with the European Union with regards to the export of Ghanaian timber. The primary objective of the VPA was to sustain access to the EU timber market by engaging in legal timber trade, strengthening in the country's regulatory system and move closer to achieve the objective of national forest policy. But this is an agreement that was meant to be signed uh, and effected in 2009. Why wasn't that done and what has changed since then? Ghana already has issues with exportation of fruits and fish to EU so that when that comes, uh, th think timber will fare any better. I want to know what the answers are. And so with me in the studio, and I'll introduce them when I come back. My name is Nadan Sakwa. This is PM Express, and we are talking timber and making sure that we don't deplete our forest. Hello and welcome back. Uh, I am talking to, uh, well, I'll start from my extreme left, uh, Alhaji Inusa Fuseni, Minister for Lands and Natural Resources. And to my immediate left, I have Dr. Richard Jima uh, from uh, Forestry Association? Commission. Forestry Commission. Forestry Commission. Last week, Ghana signed a voluntary partnership agreement with the European Union with regards to the export of Ghanaian timber. Uh, the guy who signed the uh, agreement is here himself. So I'll start with him. Alaji, welcome again. Uh, thank you, Nana. <laughs> thank you. Alaji, what, what does it mean, uh, voluntary partnership agreement? Well, the other name shows clearly. Uh, voluntary, voluntary partnership. It's voluntary. I mean... Yeah. Uh, two countries of equal capacity voluntarily submitting themselves to, to uphold certain values, mm -hmm. certain practices, which practices they believe will inure to their mutual benefits. Okay. So Europe, EU, and Ghana voluntarily signing to an agreement, which agreement will regulate the exports of timber okay. onto the European market. Mm -hmm. We elected to be part of this agreement because it also holds tremendous benefits for this country. Because uh, only legally harvested timber under the Voluntary Partnership Agreement will be allowed into the European market. Okay. Meaning the market for illegal timber is thus constricted. Mm -hmm. And so the motivation to continue to engage in illegal harvesting of timber will be removed or mitigated. Mm -hmm. Now, when you tie that policy, I mean, the, this agreement together with the domestic policy of the 2012, that is the forest and wildlife policy, and then the uh, domestic wood uh, 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 utilization uh, uh, policy, you will see clearly that this is a conscious, deliberate attempt to take away the incentive to engage in illegal uh, I mean, uh, chainsaw operations or illegal harvest of timber. The, the flip side is that if we are able to reduce the illegal exploitation of timber, we increase the protection for our forest resources mm -hmm. and thereby increase the benefits that the preservation of our forest resources will bring to this country. The other thing is, uh, here the, the uh, agreement has been on the table since 2009. I mean, what, what, what was the uh, big delay? Well, uh, I think that uh, doctor get, will speak I'll to the specifics, but let me correct some impression. Yeah. The agreement actually was signed in 2008. Okay. Okay, and ratified in 2009. But there are certain benchmarks that ought to be reached before the timber, the contract will kick in and the legal timber will be exported. And it, are, it is this benchmarks that we are meeting that I'm happy to report that at our last meeting just a few days ago, the European Union was pleased with the progress of Ghana. Indeed, we were ahead of the contractual schedule okay. of meeting some of these benchmarks. And so we are progressing steadily to the point 
And we have said that by October 2014, we should be ready to send timber onto, legally have a timber onto the EU market, in conformity with the voluntary partnership agreement. Dr. Jima, I'll bring you in here. So, I mean, the, it's, it, well, apparently it was yeah. signed in 2000. What, yeah. what are the... Um, right, uh, like the minister rightly mentioned, the agreement itself was signed in September 3, 2008. Mm -hmm. uh, but like any agreement that is bilateral, there are certain conditions that go with it. So signing the agreement in 2008 was the first stage of initialing Ghana's intention to enter into the VPA. Okay. And so then the two parties now agree that we are going to do the VPA. Mm -hmm. Then it was followed by what we call ratification, like the minister rightly mentioned, the honorable mention. So ratification means that you are taking the agreement to your respective parliament. So Ghana took the agreement to the Ghana's parliament, and the EU also took the agreement to the EU mm -hmm. parliament. Mm -hmm. And both parliament ratified, meaning that both parliament agreed that it should go on. So that was in 2009. Ghana did it uh, in June 2009, and the EU Parliament ratified DS in November 2009. And so from there, that is where actually making sure that the systems are built, the elements of the agreement, the commitment are built to ensure that the uh, agreement takes off. And within the agreement, we specifically mentioned that the issuance of the FLEC license will come in place when the two parties have the agreed license. flecked licenses. The forest, forest law, enforcement, governance, and trade license. That is the license that accompanies the VP agreement. And so that confirms that you are actually complying with the agreement. Okay. And so the two parties agreed that there will be a joint mission to find out whether all the commitments have been agreed. And when every side is satisfied, then we can go ahead and issue the flag license. So as we speak now, the EU also have their portion to do on the EU. They also have to prepare their countries to receive the timber coming from Ghana. And so both parties are in the stage of preparing to issue the flag license. So we are not yet at the stage of announcing to the world that we are issuing flag license. So that is how the hon Honorable put it. So we are now at the system development phase. And like he rightly mentioned, even on our part, we have moved further to make sure that some of the elements of the ag agreement, that is the wood tracking system, so, are even ahead on schedule. So, uh, okay. Okay. What, what, what's a wood tracking system? Right. The wood tracking system, if you permit me uh, to put it in context. Mm -hmm. no, in English? In, in English, yes. Mm. The, the agreement <laughs> has five key elements okay. that we have to fulfill to ensure that the VPA is attained. And these is what we collectively call the legality assurance system. Mm -hmm. So under the legality assurance system, we have what we call defining what is legal timber. And this has been done through a multi-stakeholder dialogue mm -hmm. with the timber industry, with civil society, with the regulators, with the ministry personnel. So we all sat down and agreed that when we say legal timber in Ghana, what does it mean? And so we have a definition for legal timber for Ghana, which was agreed by all the parties concerned within Ghana. And that agreement, fortunately, does not fall outside the laws that we have. All the, the elements of the definition of legal timber are within our laws. So no new law was added. So that is one. Then under the legality assurance system, we also have what we call the wood tracking system that you asked. This is a traceability mechanism to ensure that if we export the wood to the EU, we can trace it back to the origin where we got the, the, the wood. So that if I take wood from a forest reserve in the western region, see your, your forest reserve, and that wood f finds its way in the EU market, I can prove to the market that this is where the wood was gotten from. So that is a traceability system we are putting in place. So we are tracking the wood right from the forest or its source till its product stage and, and when it enters the market. And so that is the systems we are building for the wood tracking system. Then three, we have what we call the verification system. So we have defined our legal team, we have put in place a wood tracking system. Then there should be a mechanism to make sure that these two are working. The definition of legal team we are complying with, the traceability system is going on as planned. And so that is the work of the verification system to ensure that both the wood tracking system and the legal team definition are working well. So that is what we call the verification system. Well, the verification, it feels as the other time, 
Uh, I hope yours is better. Yes, so that is that, that is why <laughs> that is why we are taking our time to develop the systems better. Right. Yes, <laughs> yeah, well, this one too is biometric yeah. because yeah. it's going to be given a code. Exactly. So no verification, no export. No export. Yes, I see. No export. Yes, so no, no verification, no export. You, you are right, and so we, we are going to have a, a semi-electronic system uh, yeah. that that can allow easy access to data, easy reconciliation of data. It's not going to be paper-based. That is going to be tedious. This mm -hmm. one semi-electronic. So mm -hmm. even in your office, the minister can know what is going on and he can bring people to book, which is very transparent and anybody can know what is going on. Then we have what we call the independent monitor. The independent monitor is a mechanism where they will oversee the entire agreement between Ghana and the EU because an agreement between two parties, you should get somebody to step back as an independent monitor mm -hmm. to verify and see the commitment that both sides that said they will meet, they are actually heeding to them. And so that will be the work of the independent monitor to make sure that the agreement move in stream, comes on the ground to find out what we are doing in Ghana, goes to the EU to see how they are receiving the flex licenses that comes in. And so the last one is what we call the flex license. Mm -hmm. And so that is going to attest to the timber product that you are exporting, that this wood has been legally verified and it can enter the EU market without any problem. So these are the five elements that constitute the legality assurance system. Well, I think... So, so immediately, this, so these are, if you may call them a preconditions, conditions precedent yeah. to the issuance of the flag license. Okay. So when you are able to satisfy these five conditions, then you are issued with a flag license. Now, you are uh, a, a VPA compliant. Okay. I have an issue with a license. Yeah. You become VPA compliant. And so you can now export to the EU yeah. market. Okay. And you see, like we said earlier, so you can just get up now, maybe through your own mechanisms, probably bring timber from Togo and use the Ghana ports to export. No. You must, it must be passed by Ghana to meet, for, I mean, to, um, as having met the standards in the EU market. You can look at it from the point of view of the European Union, the citizens of the European Union's I mean, commitment to ensuring that we all help save the ecosystem. They're saying that, well, as wood consumers, we also have a responsibility to help wood exporting countries to manage their forest resources in a sustainable manner. So we, the consumers, will not purchase wood that is not harvested through a sustainable management practice. Mm -hmm. So it forces on the exporting country an invidious responsibility to take certain steps to guarantee and satisfy itself that it is adapting sustainable management practices for its forest resources. So you, you see the balance it's, it's, in the two way. It's, 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 uh, the other thing is uh, mm. legal timber. Is it going to be legal timber that, okay, we tell the EU that, look, for us, every tree that's five years old to us is legal timber. So when we bring it, accept it. Or the, the two of you sit down and say, no, 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 uh, two years is no good. Let it be at least 10 years. Who, who's, whose idea of legal timber? Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I think we, we, it's, it's good that uh, issues of this nature comes up, but that is what we rightly said right from the beginning, that the laws that we have used to define the legal timber, it is in our own laws, Ghana's own law. The law it was never imposed by the EU to, onto Ghana. The laws, as the agreement said, that we should respect the laws of partner countries. Mm -hmm. And so it is a bilateral country and the sovereignty of Ghana is also put on the board. And so if in Ghana we have our timber and we know that they grow 30, 40 years and they are classified as timber, that is what remains. And so if you have a plantation that the end use of the plantation is for a fuel wood and so you have a shorter rotation like five years and you harvest it, that is it. That is that, 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 that is the definition for the rotation age for uh, a wood that is going to be used for fuel wood. And so no country, specifically EU, has not set any limit for us to determine 
the year at which a tree goes to become timber. I agree. What, no. what I was trying to find out, because it was a voluntary agreement, it's yeah. voluntary, as we are coming in and say, look, we need to export our wood to your country, but we want to make sure it's done properly. Yeah. And we are telling you that from our country, every tree that's 30 years old is timber, so take it. Yeah. And they will say yes. Or are they also going to say that, no, For in our country, it's only trees that are 40 years that are timber, so we're only going to take 40 years. That's what I was trying to... Okay. No, that, that question of age doesn't come in. Not necessarily this. age. Yeah. I mean, uh, what we classify as timber, yeah. uh, is it necessarily what they also classify as timber? Yeah, uh, but, but you have to understand... We are coming from a tropical region. Mm -hmm. You see, the if we so they will take what we exactly, say exactly. Okay, exactly. So okay. they will take what we see because the management system, like the honourable said, that we are seeing that we are managing sustainably, mm -hmm. and sustainability in the tropical, for instance, is different from sustainability maybe in the temperate, for instance. Mm -hmm. And so, if Ghana says this is how we manage forests sustainably, that is what they are going to eat to, okay. and because Ghana so. is signatory to ITTO. And we, have, we conform to the International Tropical Organization's rules and regulations. So we will not do anything outside what tropical countries are supposed to do as far as management of the forest is concerned. Now, basically, it's like reducing it to me and you, mm -hmm. agreeing that this is the way we are going to conduct affairs of trade between mm -hmm. ourselves. Mm -hmm. We agree in principle to all the matters that we have set, set aside or set down mm -hmm to regulate our relationship. And so, if I conduct myself in such a way that I flout the agreements, I'll be flouting the voluntary agreement that I entered into with you. So, both Europe and Ghana, as equal partners, that's why Dr. is at pains to stress yeah. that it is not they who are imposing this on us. Yeah. As equal partners, have agreed that certain standards must be met. Right. Let me move on to uh, the monitor. Mm. Because it's a voluntary agreement, mm. why then the monitor? Because the moni I think the monitor comes in if the agreement is one-sided. But in this case, it's, it's voluntary. You know, you want legal wood, I have wood, I want to bring it legally. So what, what's the monitor's job in, in, in a voluntary contract? Oh, the monitor is, an, is also like a verifier. Yeah. It's your full compliance. Is it the propensity of people to engage in illegalities? Mm -hmm. It's still there. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. mean, the people who will be at the European side, the whole system will be managed by people. Mm -hmm. At the Ghana side, the whole system will be managed by people. We, we, the, 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 the management or style of management might either compromise or en enhance what we are doing. Mm -hmm. So you need somebody, an independent observer, a dispassionate observer, to, to, monitor him, that. To, now, to monitor distance. Uh, uh, Alaji, you mentioned something about wood coming in from Togo. Mm. So if, if Togo hasn't got the agreement with, or let's, let me use Burkina for so, because they don't have a port. So imagine they found some timber there. They have to come and use our, one of our ports, you know, to send it. Uh, what, 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 how then does it work? Well, so it, if Togo, if Burkina Faso is bringing the timber to us as Ghanaians to export, that timber must comply with the partnership. But the if Burkina Faso is exporting its timber, and that is that part of the voluntary agreement that deals with wood in transit, it's not for us. Mm -hmm. So that's wood in transit, and that must meet also certain required standards. Okay. But if they are originated, so the rules of origin matter here. Mm -hmm. If they are originating here, for instance, if we bring in locks from some other country and substantially improve upon them to show and make sure that they are harvested also conformed with sustainable environmental practices and improve upon them sustainably, I mean, substantially, mm -hmm. rules of origin will change and we might be able to export. Okay. But for us, coming home, we are more interested in ensuring because the forest resources are de depleted. We cannot continue that way. We cannot compromise the ability of future generations to also live on the forest. Mm -hmm. So it forces on us a responsibility to manage them well. Mm -hmm. So that's why for us is how to manage our forest resources 
that is the driving motivation in, ensure, in, in setting us into this agreement and not the economic benefits that will accrue to us. No. And okay. that is why even in the, locally, we are saying that yes, we need timber for roofing the houses, for the tables and whatnot. So government projects, government projects should be undertaken only with legally harvested timber. If you come to think about it, the government <coughs> being a major consumer of wood by way of the delivery of infrastructure, we are also restricting and constricting the market for illegal harvested timber. So the, 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 the whole voluntary partnership agreement with the EU has a domestic side, mm -hmm. which is the, the, the uh, domestic uh, wood uh, uh, utilization policy that we are also pursuing here in Ghana. And, and I must emphasize from what Minister even said, that Ghana specifically plays in the agreement the aspect of the domestic market, Markets. which some other countries that signed the VPA didn't include domestic, but they were more uh, export-oriented. But we saw the value that if we also maintain and sustainably manage the resource for our domestic use, it will inure to our benefit. So in Ghana's agreement, it is clearly stated that the tracking system, the verification, will transcend them also onto the domestic market. market. Like he said, to constrict the illegal operators and so that we gradually flush them out of the system. So that whenever you source timber, it should come from legal sources. Like he rightly mentioned, all the government projects, assuming all the government projects are going to source for legal timber on the domestic market, see the, the job we are going to create and see the, the, the incentives we are going to give to the industry to continuously produce and produce efficiently. So there's a lot of benefits aside monetary that we, we stand to benefit from the VPA. I mean, it's, uh, I think everybody listening will say by all means it's a commendable project and that we should all, you know, be behind it. But then the other flip side is, I mean, do we even want to export timber to EU in our condition considering the number of forests we, we are losing? Uh, should we not be doing the, op the opposite, bringing in wood from the EU and planting ours for, for posterity? I think that is a whole management issue. And you cannot look at the, what we are doing in isolation. And that's a very good question. Yeah. Uh, we need resources mm. to develop this country. Many a country have developed through the utilization of their resources, natural resources. So we must use those natural resources to develop. It is how to use them to catalyze development. That is not, that's the issue. Mm -hmm. And not the natural resource itself. Okay? Yes. So that is why government is also pursuing this national forest plantation program <laughs> of planting, putting many hectares under uh, uh, plantations. Uh, uh, they planted it in Hamatan and all got bent down. Where is that? The Jida people say they planted the trees in Hamatan and it all bent down. Oh, the, the, Jida, uh, the Jida, Jida project is a different project okay. from where we are now. So the, there's, another, there's another good one. I think somewhere. Jida was doing woodlocks because you are doing the northern part. Yeah, These are woodlocks. Okay. Okay. Well, what we are saying is, we are talking about forest plantations. Mahogany, where yeah. you can decide that you go for tick. Mm. And in five years' time, if you harvest, or seven years' time, if you harvest, you are getting round locks for poles. Mm -hmm. And that you don't need to go to the forest, the natural forest, to harvest the growing mahogany or other, other uh, important species. Mm. But you can put your land under plantation yeah. and harvest. Or when you allow it to grow, up to 12 or 15 years, you are getting a better timber. Mm. Indeed, even when the Eastern Asian countries realized that they were running out of uh, locks, mm. they came and bought those which were not even the five or six years from Ghana. Mm. They, they take. So mm. we are saying that it's possible. And again, you talk about why don't we stop? We are saying that the, those forests that we don't want to have as timber from and export, we want to turn them into ecotourism facilities. Mm -hmm. That is also in tandem mm -hmm. with sustainably managing our forest resources. There's mm -hmm. forest tourism, yeah. mm -hmm. ecotourism, mm -hmm. where look at Kako. Mm -hmm. yes. The trees standing there yeah. holding the canopy. Yes. They've contributed many times over mm -hmm. their value to the GDP of this country just by people walking on the canopies. Yeah. That's yeah. sustainable management. So we're saying that those forests that we have, that we don't want to have a stigma for, we can still use them in ways that will generate revenue for this country. Mm -hmm.
again, we are seeing that even on the domestic market, the ministry, the forestry commission is in discussion yeah. with the, uh, 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 the timber industry for the importation of timber, of timber from Cameroon to augment the local supply. So we are saying that no, don't deplete the resources. Would you? Uh, Thirdly, uh, we're exploring the use of lesser known species. Bamboos which were growing and were cutting for fire, we said no, 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 no. They can be used in ways that will augment the use of uh, I mean, the uh, timber resources of this country. So we're promoting the use of lesser known species. All this we're doing together to be able to, to I mean, use the, our timber resources or forest resources in a better way. And so, Nana, you don't look at them in that solution. I mean, if it comes to a point that we don't need to export lumber to the EU, so be it. But now we think that sustainable management will allow us to harvest and export. Alaja, I am a tree hugger, so I'm a bit uh, probably a little bit emotional when I'm talking about trees. Mm. But I am by all means for stop the industry, import in, uh, duty free, just bring the trees in from. Congo and the Cameroon, those who are got a lot to, and, and save every tree standing. Yeah, they came no, to I me. Think, I think they, we've they depleted they, too they, much. The timber industry came to me uh, with an application to, to bring in number yeah. uh, uh, duty free. Duty free. We, are, we have told them to just go and work it out. You see, duty or taxes are needed for the development of this country. To waive taxes, you must demonstrate mm. that the waiver is more beneficial than the tax because of the 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 benefits on this case it is i mean and in this well, case so it clearly is. So we owe the people of this country the irresponsibility and duty well if you it save if you, if you save me one tree and you bring in one and uh, you don't tax that no, i just wish it's that, a lot of money i just wish that all the people of ghana were like you yeah. huh? we'll have you a say, problem if but you we save need me to... one tree here which mm. is going to bring me what 250 million liters of uh, rain in its lifetime. Time. It's better than, you know, bringing me one tree duty free from Cameroon. And if the rain comes and then the water is collected and they form a river, and the river flows naturally from wherever it is. Yeah. It's more than the duty more of the More than buying <laughs> pipes and collecting those pipes to carry water for wherever. So the benefits are immense. Yeah. You and I understand this. Many more people do understand what we're talking about. But many more people will need explanations well, that, what, that, that, that's, that's why we're here we're going to take a break and then when we come back we we'll continue but then i want to find out how do we educate the individual not to cut the tree rather than police him stopping from catching we say we're coming <laughs> mm. <laughs> hello and uh, welcome back and i've just asked uh, Allowed you to vote for me, RTP Kwao to 1446. Mm -hmm. And he's just, you know, giving me a vote. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Doctors promised his vote. So as you're watching at home, pick up a mobile phone. It's RTP Kwao to 1446. Again, tomorrow, uh, if you have access to Joy FM, uh, Joy 99.7 FM, or online, www.myjoyonline.com, at 2 o'clock, I have a show that I call That's My Opinion. And I am asking, coincidentally, that what have we got to show for our depleting resources? So that if we didn't, we lived to 300 years, and our children ask us, what did you do with our gold and our timber? Is there anything you have to show for it? What would we show? But I want to start with you, Doc. Yeah. Education. How do we, because at the moment, what we do is you send in spies yeah. and soldiers and forest police to make sure that people don't go and cut the tree. How do we reverse the trend so that uh, the guy doesn't even want to go and cut the tree anyway? He, okay. he wants to preserve the tree. Right. You know, how do we get to that side? Okay. I think it's, it's a very good question and a laudable idea. Uh, we have to repackage the way we educate the populace about the importance of forest. Now, first of all, forest has goods and services. But unfortunately, uh, in our present time, in, 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 in day in Ghana, 
we tend to concentrate more on the goods that we see, the timber that comes out of the forest, the snails that we get from the forest, mm -hmm. the little other things that we get from That is where we've placed the concentration because the moment people see timber, the, the thinking is that that is all that the forest has to offer. But there are the environmental services side of the forest mm -hmm. because with the forest, we are able to protect our water bodies. With the forest, we even are able to get clean air to breathe. Mm -hmm. When you go to developed countries, people will take a walk through the forest, and when they come back, they are refreshed and they are healthy. So we have to announce to people the aesthetic value of the forest. With forest, we can go into ecotourism. So people will have time, build, will have camps in the forest, people will pass the night, days there, explore nature, and we can even introduce the kids at that tender age to go into the forest, roam freely in the forest, see a lot of things that they can find within the forest. And you'll be amazed how they will appreciate it. At least I've witnessed this in countries like Japan. And the moment you announce to the kids at the school that we are going to the forest, for, and it is haywire. Because they have seen the value of forest. And we can import the same education in, in, in our system in Ghana. So we should now go to the extent of hammering more on the the uh, services that the forests offer, especially in terms of environment service, protecting our water bodies, giving us better climate, uh, protecting us from floods. Now we are all feeling the pinch of the, of the climate change. Why? Because people didn't ha have emotional attachment to the forest. Forests were being cut down indiscriminately. Our farming practices are also not helping us. The slash and burn, people do it for, uh, because they don't even understand the impact. But if we should introduce more efficient farming system, educate people on what they should do, the same area that they are clearing for farming, they can even clear a smaller area and get more produce from it. So Forest Commission will repackage the way we educate the <coughs> populace on the importance like, of forest. I like repackage. I'll bring uh, Alajin here briefly before yeah. I move on something. Alajin, you see, uh, if you told the kid in Japan or... Uh, London or America that, oh, this weekend we're going to the woods. They probably won't sleep the whole week oh. looking forward to oh. go to the woods. Oh. But then if I came here and I said, well, this weekend we're going to the farm, again, that child will sleep thinking, oh, my God, Lord. not again. Mm -hmm. So this repackaging, how do we make the farm as exciting as the woods? I honestly, I don't have the answer. I don't know if you... Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the, 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 whole, the whole world is thinking along those lines. Mm -hmm. I recently attended a conference in, in Turkey. I mean, the whole United Nations was uh, now reconsidering putting values on services that are, are granted by, by the forest, mm -hmm. uh, which services have gone unaccounted for. <laughs> Bec and because they are unaccounted, we don't put values. And so mm -hmm. people don't appreciate what they do or what they mean. Okay? But I can tell you, forests hold tremendous values for us. I mean, go ask the fringe, forest fringe communities and they'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, in the morning, you just walk into the forest, and wild snails are there. You didn't put them there. You continuously <laughs> harvest them. Okay? For the crop, you didn't grow them. Yeah. Uh, uh, the coco yam leaves. Yes. yes. You didn't put them there. Yes. The wild well, coconuts, you didn't put them there. Mm. They're just there. Yeah, the they just go. The, the sponge, sponge yeah. I mean. So then, on the sustainable manner, you go for bush meat. You didn't put them there. Mm. You understand? So, when we take all this, then our tall buildings will, will tell us that something has happened. Mm -hmm. Because when there's storm, what is the storm break? Mm -hmm. You will have no storm break. Mm -hmm. So your beautiful roof will be ripped off. Then you will blame it on the weather. No. You blame it on yourself. Because nature created windbreaks for you. Mm -hmm. And you decided that you didn't need windbreaks and depleted the forest cover. And now, there's nothing to stop a ferocious wind. Like Haiti. Uh, Haiti yeah. comes and hits you, and that's all. Yeah. They are farmers. They know, they now know. When they were told not to slash and burn, they thought, and that is the mentality. Mm. I mean, it's uh, African mentality, mm. or a Ghanaian mentality. Yeah. When something is in abundance, can value it. Would have, would have value. We think that it will never finish. Yeah. So we treat it with impunity. We just continue depleting with a rock cause, with a count. You see, and that is what has landed us in trouble. 
Why do we have the vulgarities of the weather? Yeah. Why are people who traditionally were farmers are now more poor or poorer than, than their predecessors? Because they can no longer predict rainfall patterns. Because the trees are gone. Mm. And so rains come when they shouldn't come. Exactly. And the farmer is not prepared to plow. Yeah. And so it <laughs> rains are come, he rushes in, <laughs> plows. Immediately he, finish, he finishes plant, planting. Yeah, the rain is gone. It's gone. And when the rain is coming to, they come in torrents. They wash away everything. Climate change. Mm. Arise, and climate change is a human phenomenon. They still call it anthropogenic. Yeah. It's we who brought about it. Let me move on and mm. I'll stay with you, Alaji. Is are we uh, contacting the big industries in the big worlds uh, to uh, pay for our tree planting? Because they have to offset carbon dioxide. So they would need people who can plant trees uh, on their behalf so they can put in carbon dioxide, we put in the oxygen and balance. Are we approaching them, you know, the big, big boys? Yeah, the Minister of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation has set up a carbon credit, uh, this a carbon sequestration mm -hmm. office in the ministry, and then uh, we are working up the mechanism. There is a mechanism that has not been com completely worked out. Mm -hmm. And clearly, this is big business going it's forward. A lot, it's a lot of business. And many people are coming into this country to acquire lands for the purposes of, a, a, I mean, putting those lands under plantation because they are in, I mean, they are doing so in anticipation of us, I mean, of the country setting up mm. this carbon trading system mm -hmm. where they can easily get people to pay for the carbon. And, 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 and so these things are being worked out. And uh, this is, again, another thing that was, and something we should tell Ghanaians, yeah. mm -hmm. that grab lands, put those lands under cultivation. In future, somebody some, somewhere will be paid just for you to keep that land. Just for you to keep the farm and keep the forest. Yes. Forest. And, and, and to add to what Honorable said, in fact, if we go that way and we quantify the returns, that will come as a result of we entering into those climate change investment programs. It's wonderful. It is more than 100 times what we are receiving from the physical goods of Tima mm -hmm. that we are exporting outside. Because the moment the tree is planted, the investment is so good that Every year, depending on the arrangement that you, you do with the investor, it accrues carbon credit for you. Mm -hmm. So like timber that you export, you have to cut it before you get the money. But this, the tree is standing, you don't need to cut it, but you only measure some differences in, in, in carbon addition, and you quantify that carbon addition in monetary terms. And in our education, this is what we are going to show, mm -hmm. how carbon gain and the sort of exponential money that you can get from it. So this will serve as an incentive for people to enter into the carbon trade. Because there's so much uh, potential and opportunities there that we have not tapped into. Now we have to tap into the services of the forest mm -hmm. and leave the goods for now. Because the services can offer us more than 100 what the goods are Just offering. Just like value addition. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, like value addition. Yeah. Exporting raw lumber mm -hmm. and other value. Alaji, but how soon can we... Get it, because I know it's been going on for. Hey, I mean, I think yeah. we are a bit late coming on board, no. though. Oh, but if, oh. if we are late at all, ne better late than never. Yeah, yeah, I know. I yeah, know. So, uh, so, so, better late so, than never. But, but, but yeah, so that's what we are doing now. Mm. And I, I just, as, at the beginning of the program, I spoke about the forest and wildlife policy. Mm. Okay, uh, and now everybody knows. Mm. And I cited the uh, example of Kaku. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that. Yeah. Look, if you, there are ways to maximize revenue. Mm. Not through exploitation, I mean, exploitation of the resource, yeah. Yeah. Eh? but the true sustainable management of the resource. Yeah. And so we are all the whole world is moving, mm. and Ghana cannot be left behind. Yeah. We are moving in tandem with the world. Yeah. In Malaysia and other places, but, you uh, find uh, large plantations. I imagine, I, I have, do we still have timber concessions in the country? We do. Do we need them? Presently, we we need them. But going forward, we have to take a decision on them. Yeah. But we do. We do have. Will you take them in your office or will be after you? No, no. I mean, it, it depends on the trends, the moving trends. And then if you put in place the systems, mm -hmm. and I believe so, mm -hmm. that if you put in place systems, you might not need to export wood to, to the EU. Yeah. Let them deal with their wood requirements and we also keep our forests. Yeah. But the systems must be there to compensate. I mean, it's just like the economies that yeah. we did. 
Yeah. Uh, the opportunity cost of, <laughs> of, 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 in the, yeah. Yeah, of saving a tree yeah. and importing ah. one. <laughs> yeah, so you have to do the balancing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And say, well, look, if I leave the tree here, mm -hmm. what is the opportunity cost? Is what I'm losing exporting it to uh, Europe? Europe. Mm -hmm. yeah. What will be what will more than augment from what I'm going to lose? Mm -hmm. Then you need to promote tourism yeah. mm -hmm. and the delivery of services. Yeah. So if our tourism industry is booming, you need not export in it. Uh, went uh, lumber mm -hmm. to Europe mm -hmm. because people will go and have a fresh of I mean, a breath of fresh air. Yeah. They will go and appreciate nature. And even I, I always want well at Legon, I used to use Legon as an example. Okay. That because of the trees and everything there, if you anytime you enter Legon, the environment serene. appears serene. 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 Yeah. very serene. Yes, the yes the trees. Yeah. And and that is what can do to promote if we talk about Increasing our lifespans. It's not just by exercising. Yeah. Also, breathing fresh air can, can increase our lifespan. And I, I'll even add an example to what the Honawa said. Let's take the East in African countries, Kenya, Tanzania. Mm -hmm. They don't have timber. Mm -hmm. All that they have is wildlife, wildlife ranges. Mm -hmm. And they are even savanna ecosystems. Yeah. The, the fortunate thing is that they are not uh, killing their animals, so, so to speak, to eat them. But... They are preserving their animals for people to come and watch. And look at the, the, the trend of tourism that goes to Kenya, that goes to South Africa, that goes to Tanzania. And the, the, their revenue coming from tourism is about 10 times what we are receiving from our export, export of timber. timber. So yeah. that is where the direction should go now. We should be able to Leave understand. the trees for them to come and watch. Exactly. And Leave the trees and then the animals, promote. these are the natural habitats of the animals. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, because we are in the forest zone, mm -hmm. yeah. the presence of the trees mm -hmm. constitute the natural habitat That's, of the animals. Yeah. So it will attract the ad animals. So the, guy, the guy buying the wood will now come and watch it. Oh, watch and, and, and pay, and, and pay for and it. And pay for it. <laughs> and you are creating jobs along the, so, uh, along the value chain. Mm -hmm. Because you build hotels, you create employment for people. And, and those listening to us, they must keep their insatiable appetite for bushmeat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, also, we are eating everything from the forest. I, I tell you a story of the corridor between Burkina Faso yeah. and Ghana yeah. okay. for migratory species. Mm -hmm. oh, I see. And Burkina Faso was protecting them. Anytime they came into Ghana, they reduced the number. They never returned. <laughs> <laughs> and, and why not? <laughs> And why not? But, you know, I think it's been a good education. Yeah. Uh, but since, Alaji, you are here, I think, you know, obviously, you are the organ grinder. So we ask that, you know, you protect the trees. Mm -hmm. And uh, this uh, agreement, I think, is a good cause so that we can keep uh, the, uh, the chainsaw thing because I think it's, a, it's an absolute menace. Yeah. And yeah. policing is very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. So if you chop it and nobody can buy it, yeah. Then uh, that's the problem. But Alaji, the other thing that's on, it's not on the table, but since you were here, it's uh, rivers. We, we, we're destroying our rivers with this Galamsey business. What, what, is there any news quickly for us before we go? But that, that is, you see, when you talk about the environment, mm. you talk about the degradation that is coming to us as a result of the irresponsible mm. conduct of some people. You're talking in, large, in larger terms of intergenerational equity. You have those rivers. Nana, they have been around for many years. Yeah. Our ancestors knew they that protected. there was gold. No, that there was gold. Mm -hmm. But they told us that you don't mine gold in river bodies. Mm -hmm. Because they knew that those water bodies sustain life. Alaji, I need to get you back in, you know, since, you know, uh, and talk about environment. But we're looking at uh, wood, and it's Ghana up to the scratch. But yes, we've conformed to all the international uh, regulations, and uh, we are up to the scratch. We just need to sustain it for posterity. But as I said, tomorrow, 2 o'clock, tune in to Joy FM and listen to uh, the question I'm asking, that what have we got to show for our depleting resources? And that's my opinion. But today you've been watching PM Express. My name is Nana Sakwa, and as I say, tomorrow we'll be back to do it all over again.